Moo. Hi. Today we're going to do a video tour of the Arcade Classic Afterburner. This is an Afterburner Deluxe cabinet with uh, Afterburner 2 boards installed. So let's take a look around. Now this is a large, heavy game with a lot of different parts, so we'll move around and talk about what we see. From the back you have the lighted marquee. As we move around the side you can see into the cockpit area. Now we've got a throttle control next to the seat, a flight stick with uh, buttons for missiles, uh, there's a start button and then uh, your screen of course, uh, the coin tower over on the side, as you move around the front you can see the front access panel here for the PCBs and the rotating cabinet assembly, there's an access panel here to get to the monitor adjustments. And as we come around this side, uh, there's an access panel in the floor to get to the motor that controls your roll. And then on the back here, we have an access panel to allow you to get to the pitch motor. Well, here we are at the back of the game with the cover removed for the pitch motor. This uh, pitch motor is hooked into a gear drive box. The motor is down at the bottom, then we have a gear drive box here, and uh, it drives this rubber wheel, and the rubber wheel contacts the cabinet, which is what actually makes everything move back and forth. Uh, on my cabinet, somebody's put a piece of skateboard grip tape here, which seems to be a pretty good idea, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, there's also a fan motor down here to try to keep this cool. Uh, if we wanna see this in action, I can turn the game off and back on again, and it'll do its power-up self-test, and. Uh, roll the cabinet back and forth so that you can see how it goes. Now here we're inside the coin tower. Here's your coin mechs over here. Uh, the bottom has a uh, bucket to pull out for your quarters. Underneath that is a, a coin counter. Um, I've got an empty slot in mine, but there's space for two coin counters. And then here you have all of your game controls. There's a volume switch. Uh, there's a test switch, a service switch, and the demagnetizer switch, which is a degauss for the screen. Uh, the test switch and the service switch, one adds credits and the other one is uh, puts you in a test mode for the game. So here we are in front of the game. This is the PCB cage. The PCB is inside of this, obviously. There's a filter board on the top, and then uh, here's all the wiring that goes to the various other parts of the cabinets, the speakers, and the motors. Next to the PCB we have a uh, power supply. Pan over this way. and You can see that we also have uh, this board here is the drive board and back here we have the board with all the SCRs that actually run the giant motors. This is the uh, sound amplifier. We've got a DC to DC converter, a couple of uh, gigantic transformers and then fuse block and uh, some more uh, circuit breakers down over there. This is the access panel in the front of the uh, cabinet. There's a similar mechanism in the side. This is how the board gets its feedback on the movement of the cabinet. There's a sector gear here that hooks to a uh, just a spur gear that's hooked to a potentiometer. So as the cabinet rotates, this moves back and forth moves the potentiometer and gives feedback to the cabinet to tell it where it's at. There's also a limit switch on either side to keep it from going too far. Um, the one of these for the pitch motor is actually in the post on the side of the game. If I uh, power cycle the game then we'll be able to see this mechanism move and you can see how the feedback's generated. We're looking here under the floorboard access panel at the roll motor. Uh, the roll motor has a mechanism very similar to what you saw on the pitch motor. You just can't see it here, but there's a, a rubber wheel that runs this back and forth. And as before, we'll power cycle the game and take a look at how this moves. Uh, this also has a fan motor in this area here to help cool that motor down. This is the cockpit part of the cockpit afterburner, the, the best part of it. 
Uh, it's a terrific cabinet. You've got four speaker sound, two in front and two behind. There are uh, warning lights up here to tell you when someone's locked on. Of course, you've got the flight stick with your missile button and Vulcan cannons. You've got a start button for the game. There's a throttle, uh, which was added with uh, Afterburner 2. And uh, underneath, you've even got a, a spot here to plug in your headphones if you brought them with you to the arcade. When I was restoring this game last year, I had the flight stick assembly out, and I took that opportunity to record a little bit of footage. Now this is kind of like an iceberg, I guess, because what you see here is really only a very small part of this gigantic mechanism that hangs off the back of this thing. Maybe a little bit overkill, but this is uh, what does all the business back here. So you can see when you're actually adjusting the pitch, you're moving this entire assembly back and forth. And on this side over here, you would have a potentiometer right there that is... Uh, run by that uh, sector gear that's uh, providing the pitch input. As far as roll goes, this entire stick in the middle is on some bearings and rotates and you can see it moving that potentiometer right there to provide the roll input. The detent is provided by a couple of spring-loaded um, rollers as you can see right there and as far as the pitch detent don't know if you can see it in here, but uh, when you go up, it's just gravity to go back down. And then when you go down, it's uh, moving a couple of springs in there that provide the, uh, provide the detent. Well, that's a short tour of the Afterburner Deluxe Arcade Cabinet. I think all that's left now is to play a game.